Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. Today is Monday, April 4th, 2022. This is edition number 148 of season four of the Morning Devotional. We are working our way through the Westminster Shorter Catechism. We're still dealing with matters related to the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Thus, we're using larger catechism question 174 to further understand these very important truths. But let's pray together first, and then we'll consider more of the uh, answer of question 174 of the larger catechism. Let's pray. Father, as we now look at your word, as we come to these very important matters, we would ask that your spirit would guide us and direct us. <clears throat> we do pray for your help and strength in all that we put our hands to, that you would remember your promises to us, that you would be faithful to us, even as you said you would be that you would never leave us nor forsake us, that you'd grant us your spirit in our time of need. And each time we look at your word, Lord, we have great need. And so may you help us, may you humble us, may you strengthen us by these things. We pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we have been considering larger catechism question 174, in which it asks, what is required of them that receive the sacrament of the Lord's Supper in the time of the administration of it? The answer, it is required of them that receive the sacrament of the Lord's Supper that during the time of the administration of it, with all holy reverence and attention, they wait upon God in that ordinance, diligently observe the sacramental elements and actions, heedfully discern the Lord's body, and affectionately meditate on his death and sufferings. Now, these are matters that we've already considered in the Thursday edition of last week. On March 31st, in edition number 147. So if you have not listened to that, you may want to go back and uh, do so, or if you need to review, you can. Today we're going to consider the next section of this answer, and thereby stir up themselves to a vigorous exercise of their graces in judging themselves and souring for sin, in earnest hungering and thirsting after Christ, feeding on Him by faith, receiving of His fullness, trusting in His merits, rejoicing in His love, giving thanks for His grace, and renewing of their covenant with God and love to all the saints. This morning we're going to consider just these, uh, these aspects in which we are to stir up ourselves to a vigorous exercise of our graces in judging ourselves and souring for uh, sin. Now, in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26, we read, Therefore, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And, of course, one of the graces there that is uh, helpful for us to meditate upon and remember is that the Lord will return. That is a promise that is held out to us at the end of the canon of the Bible, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus, and we long for that as God's people. We long for the return of Christ in, uh, in this uh, world. But over in chapter 10, in verses 3 through 5, there we read, well, backing up really to verse 1, For I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers who were, were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and the sea and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, let me just stop there and simply say that the things that were signified to them in the elements, the, the sacramental elements of the Old Testament economy, uh, Passover, uh, the bread come down from heaven, and all that these things typified, uh, they did not appropriate them by faith. They did not, uh, they did not um, use those opportunities as an exercise of, uh, of grace to them to move them and to encourage them to walk in faith before God. And so we drop down to verse 11. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. And then in verse 14, Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. And so, as a result of these matters, we should turn away from sin, we should turn away from those things that easily beset us, and we should strive after those things that God has demanded of us and commands of us 
uh, to do. And that leads, of course, to the very next uh, aspect to hear uh, in the answer, to stir up ourselves to a vigorous exercise of their graces in judging themselves. Now, Paul mentions that in, in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 31, but if, we, but if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be uh, judged. That is to say, have an honest and sober assessment of your own selves. As you're at the Lord's Supper, as you're sitting there, as you're participating at this meal, not only are you looking for means by which you can vigorously exercise and stir up the graces in you, but you are to rightly, soberly judge your own frame and understanding of these matters. As Christians, we have a long way to go. Nobody has arrived. We have much to learn. We have much to accomplish. But frankly, we have a great deal of worldliness that needs to be purged out of our existence. And so we rightly judge these things in our lives, and we seek to make corrections and adjustments as we go. But then also, we are to sorrow for sin and the ways in which we uh, fall short of God's glory, we are to be sorrowful for those things. Sadly, in today's world, so many people, and maybe you're one of these people, I don't know, but so many people, they sin against God, it doesn't seem to be any big deal. It's no different really than taking a shower in the morning or washing your face or brushing your teeth. It's just something that happens and you confess it, sure, but it doesn't really make any impact. It doesn't grieve the soul. It doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't do anything beyond the mere inconvenience of the matter, but we really should uh, grieve these things. Now, Zechariah 12 and verse 10, there we read, And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on, whom, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. Now, undoubtedly, the analogy doesn't need to be really explained, does it? The fact is, is that if we were to lose a child, we would mourn grievously, we would weep bitterly, we would be stricken at the heart, it would, it would, be, a, a, an, it would be a burden of great weight. But that's precisely how we should see our sin. And, and, and we recognize that it's because of our sin that put the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And as we're sitting there participating at these elements, we recognize that we see our transgressions, those, those things that, we, that come to mind that we know we are doing and displease our Lord, and it should grieve us. And Jesus says that as much in, in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, verse um, in Matthew, um, uh, 5 and, and verse uh, 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. That is to say, mourn their sin. Now recognize on the other side of that, there is forgiveness, there is hope in Christ. There is a comforting that comes along with our sin uh, through the work of Christ. And that's again something that the elements there that you're holding at the meal, the Lord's Supper, is communicating to you. So we don't mourn as those without hope. We don't mourn our sin as those without hope. But we look to Christ then and plead his mercy and find comfort in our time of need. And so these are things that we should be doing at the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. We should be stirring up our, the graces within us. We should be judging ourselves rightly, soberly, and we should be do, doing honest assessment with sin, and it should grieve us, sorrow, cause us to be sorrowful for it. And then turn and look to what the meal represents, that is the work of Christ for sinners, and then lay hold of that as a comfort and a hope as we continue pilgriming in this world. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, you can contact me. The means to do that is there before you on the screen. And so until Tuesday, when we continue looking further into larger catechism 174, may the Lord bless you today. May you seek first his kingdom, his righteousness. God bless.